we're at the hotel last night having a bite to eat and having a couple of pops. And we ran into these guys from Evans and uh, Waterless Engine Coolant. We had a good chat with them. You know, this stuff seems like it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to try it out in our sled. We're going to get John to explain this to us. Yeah, hi. Uh, we've been doing Waterless Engine Coolant since the early 90s, but uh, this is the first year we've had something just for the Power Sports product. So our coolant, without having water in it, has a very high boiling point, 375 degrees. It operates at standard temperatures, but uh, with a high boiling point like that, it's not going to overheat. It's not corrosive, it doesn't freeze, it doesn't go bad with time. So it's a permanent coolant. Once you convert over to our coolant, you're, you're done. There's no more maintenance, there's no more topping up. It's, uh, it's the last thing you need to put in your radiator. It'll keep you from overheating, fights detonation, you don't get cavitation. It's, uh, it's a very effective thing for, uh, for solving your cooling problems. And you also mentioned that there's actually no pressure inside the system. Yeah, it runs at a very low pressure because you don't have, uh, you're not making steam, and the steam is what's adding a lot of the pressure to the, to the system by, by expansion. And uh, so, you know, if you do a good conversion, you get the water out. We need it to be 5% or less water content. You don't have an air pocket stuck in there because that can also add some pressure. But if you do a good conversion, you're able to actually take the radiator cap off the uh, radiator when the engine's hot and it doesn't come pouring out. It's, uh, it's safe that way. Okay, so what this means for a sledder is I remove my old coolant, because we talked about this. I remove my old coolant, get rid of all the water and coolant in the system. I install your product. And what does that mean for me when I'm driving? I almost always run into an overheat issue when I'm on the trail because, you know, I've got big paddles. If I hit some trail for a while, I'm getting no cooling on the coolers, right? So, you know, the temperature gauge, will, it'll peak really, fit, really fast before I even notice it happens, more or less. Uh, so what does this product mean for me that way? Well, yeah, you get the water content down. It's compatible with uh, glycol, so you don't worry about flushing with water as a start. Um, once you've got it in the machine, you're riding along, uh, you know, you might see the temperature come up. We don't say that it lowers the temperature, but it's safe at higher temperatures. So at 220 with a water-based coolant, uh, you're on the edge of overheating and you really don't have much uh, room to play with. You get to 230, you are overheating. Well, with our coolant, you see 220, 230, it's okay. It's stable. It's keeping the metal temperatures under control. It's not going to boil over and, and lose coolant. Um, and, and so you're, you're safe that way. We don't recommend that people go to very high temperatures, but if it happens, it, you don't damage the uh, engine components. Obviously, if there's something wrong with the cooling system, you need to, uh, you need to fix the cooling system and, and make sure that it's working properly. But in a pinch, uh, when, you, when you're not getting snow to the, to the cooler or something's going on, it will save you the engine damage that you'd otherwise get for the water-based coolant. This graph shows the heat transfer qualities of our coolant versus a water-based coolant. You can see that water is actually a better heat transfer fluid in its liquid state. Our coolant runs about here. Well, when you get to the boiling point of water, it drops down and you get almost nothing out of it, whereas ours stays stable. It, it keeps doing the job. This, this graph shows the, uh, the, the vapor pressure formed by water versus our coolant. Uh, as the temperature rises, you can see that a water-based antifreeze uh, sees a rise in the pressure. Ours is, is a very flat curve, so you're really not creating much pressure in the system at all. This is a very interesting kind of product. I think we're probably going to do some testing of this, maybe some on-trail stuff. I know I overheat. We all do playing around on certain days, especially in eastern Ontario. So, I don't know, we're going to take this product, we're going to bring it home. Maybe we'll install it in our mod sled and we'll do a little bit of testing. Thank you very much for your time, John. Great, thanks a lot. It's been